What is your price? Is it 10 million? Is it 20 million? Is it 100 million? What is your price? Because if your price is not your life, then you are for sale. If we do not put God and Christ, the Book of Mormon, the restored gospel, into the very center of our lives that everything else revolves around, God's not going to give us more. If we don't value what he's already given us, why would he give us more? What we know about the gold plates when Joseph Smith got them is that there was a band around two-thirds of the gold plates, which was the literal sealed portion. But beyond that, I think there is another sealed portion of the Book of Mormon that is only available to those who take it seriously. If you were offered diamonds or rubies or the Book of Mormon, which would you choose? What is up, guys? Welcome to the Stick of Joseph YouTube channel. Today, I'm rocking solo. Jackson's out of town. And we had another video that we're working on, and it's taken a lot of time. We've actually been working on tons of projects recently. Uh, one of them I'm going to announce right now. I wasn't planning on doing this earlier today, but I'm going to do it. See this book right here? It's called In the Language of Adam right here. It says not for resale, and it's because this is a proof. This book was written by David Butler, D. John Butler is the name uh, who we had on and you guys loved his content. Well, since then, he's written a book with a lot more new information. And we've actually started a little publishing company called Plain and Precious Publishing. And we are going to be publishing this book. It's going to be coming out uh, May 1st. And we're going to be doing a, a probably a pre-sale here soon. But the book, this is a little sneak peek of the proof that we got. We're super excited. We'll get more of that later, and I'll share the unique things that we're doing with this book that has never been done before in publishing, that I've seen at least. So exciting things. That's been taking, you know, the multitude of time is, you know, starting a publishing company. And so when it comes to our videos, we have a couple awesome ones in the pipeline, but they just require more work. But I woke up this morning and there was something in my bones that I wanted to talk about. And I don't know why this hasn't been something I've been thinking about often, but I, uh, I want to talk about the sealed portion of the Book of Mormon. I want to talk about what that is, what it can mean on a physical level, what it can mean on a spiritual level, and what we need to do as Latter-day Saints to open up the sealed portion of the Book of Mormon. First, I want to start off with this awesome general conference talk from Russell M. Nelson, and he, he gives a story about uh, the Book of Mormon and when he was able to give a Book of Mormon to a king of a tribe, and I think it, it is a good place to start when it comes to the sealed portion of the Book of Mormon. In 1986, I was invited to give a special lecture at a university in Accra, Ghana. There I met a number of dignitaries, including an African tribal king. As we visited prior to the lecture, the king spoke to me only through his linguist, who then translated for me. I responded to the linguist, and the linguist translated my responses to the king. After my lecture, the king made his way directly to me, but this time without his linguist. To my surprise, he spoke in perfect English. The Queen's English, I might add. The king seemed puzzled. Just who are you, he said. I replied, I'm an ordained apostle of Jesus Christ. The king asked, what can you teach me about Jesus Christ? Well, I responded with a question. May I ask what you already know about him? The king's response revealed he was a serious student of the Bible and one who loved the Lord. I then asked if he knew about the ministry of Jesus Christ to the people of ancient America. As I expected, he did not. I explained. After the Savior's crucifixion and resurrection, he came to the people of ancient America, where he taught his gospel. He organized his church and asked his disciples to keep a record of his ministry among them. That record, I continued, is what we know as the Book of Mormon. It is another testament of Jesus Christ. It is a companion scripture to the Holy Bible. Well, at this point, the king became very interested. I turned to the mission president accompanying me and I asked if he had a copy of the Book of Mormon with him. He pulled one from his briefcase. I opened it to 3 Nephi, chapter 11, and together the king and I read the, sa the Savior's sermon to the Nephites. I then presented the copy of the Book of Mormon to him. His response lodged in my mind and heart forever. You could have given me diamonds or rubies, but nothing is more precious to me than this additional knowledge about the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, after experiencing the power of the Savior's words in 3 Nephi, the king proclaimed, 
If I'm converted and join the church, I will bring my whole tribe with me. <laughs> oh, King, I said, it doesn't work that way. Conversion is an individual matter. The Savior ministered to the Nephites one by one. Each individual receives a witness and testimony of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, my brothers and sisters, how precious is the Book of Mormon to you? If you were offered diamonds or rubies or the Book of Mormon, which would you choose? Honestly, which is of greater worth to you? Boom. That is a fire question. Oh, that was cringe. Holy cow, guys. I'm not Gen Z, and I just used fire. I'm, I'm a father of, of two, maybe three, and I'm, that was an awesome talk, though. Oh, I just realized that I watched that on 1.5 speed, so hopefully you guys can understand. I'm used to listening to things quickly, so I hope you guys can still understand. But I think that's a really wise question. How much do we really value the Book of Mormon and what it brings, the additional knowledge, the plain and precious things that were removed from the Bible due to uninspired editors? Now, what we have of the Book of Mormon is so valuable in and of itself, but the Book of Mormon itself talks about something else that is given or that exists within the Book of Mormon, but is sealed up. And so we can't actually see it, right? So this, uh, you can find this in uh, Ether chapter three. And this is talking about the brother of Jared. He was able to see amazing things and he wrote them all down. He was commanded to write them down. He writes it down in, and, and we see this in uh, verse 27 of chapter three. And the Lord said unto him, write these things and seal them up and I will show them in mine own due time unto the children of men. And so the brother Jared writes down these amazing things that he learned from the Lord, but then the Lord gives conditions to when he is actually going to reveal the sealed portion of the book. And it's in the next chapter on uh, chapter four, verse six. And it says, for the Lord said unto me, they shall not go forth unto the Gentiles until the day that they shall repent of their iniquity and become clean before the Lord. And in that day that they shall exercise faith in me, saith the Lord, even as the brother of Jared did, that they may become sanctified in me, then will I manifest unto them the things which the brother of Jared saw, even to the unfolding unto them all my revelations. So it's talking about how the way that we get the sealed portion is to repent. Now I'm going to talk about an idea that I've thought of recently where, yes, uh, what we know about the gold plates when Joseph Smith got them is that there was a band around like a third, I think it might have been even two-thirds of the gold plates, which was the literal sealed portion of the gold plates. And I do think that it's talking about that. But beyond that, I think there is another sealed portion of the Book of Mormon that is only available to those who take it seriously. And what I mean is this. There is a underlying spiritual message throughout the whole book that can only be seen with those who have eyes to see and ears to hear. I, f I feel like recently with some of the conversations I've had with people like the Mike Days, the Dave Butlers, the Greg Matsons, those who have studied the scriptures in depth for their whole lives, I feel like finally maybe I am having the scales fall off my eyes and my ears open so that I can truly see the things of God in the Book of Mormon. And I think that that is part of the sealed portion. There is a message hidden in plain sight, but it's only given to those who are seeking to repent, those who are seeking to know God and are taking his word seriously. And I, I'm trying to do that. I feel like I'm starting to get there, but I have a long way to go. And I, it, it makes me excited because I've read the Book of Mormon cover to cover, let's say like seven times maybe in my life, but... I haven't even read the Book of Mormon cover to cover with eyes to see and ears to hear. I, it has There is a whole other narrative that is underneath the top layer narrative that we can dive into. And honestly, that's one of the big subjects of this book in the language of Adam, where Dave Butler is trying to teach us the language of Adam, which is essentially, you know, ritual temple language that exists in the Book of Mormon and is is found throughout. And 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 for those who have gone through, you know, the temple experience, you will find in extremely enriching.
So I think it's really important that we take the Book of Mormon seriously. There is no price on our head that we would give up the Book of Mormon or our faith for. And it reminds me, I, I saw this video the other day, and I sent it to some friends. I'm going to pop it up right now. Um, this guy named James O'Keefe, he's a, he's a journalist, and he's been through some crazy stuff. And, you know, whatever political persuasion you are, I don't really care. I, all I care is I think this message is really powerful. So I'm going to watch it real quick, and we'll talk about how it applies. So let's check it out. What is your price? Is it $10 million? Is it $20 million? Is it $100 million? What is your price? Because if your price is not your life, then you are for sale. If your price is not your life, then you are for sale. So, if you're going to be a truth teller, your price has to be your life. I can't surround myself with people whose price is not their life. Because the enemy, whatever the enemy is, whether it be physical, legal, spiritual, will, will, will attack the vulnerability of the person who can be compromised. So you get real spiritual real fast uh, if you're going to do this type of work. So I found that to be very insightful because it, it goes along with uh, what President Nelson was saying. Like it, you could have brought diamonds and rubies, but it would not be more valuable than this. Is, it, is there a price if someone came up to you and said, I'm going to give you a billion dollars, but you have to stop reading the Bo Book of Mormon. You have to denounce its, its veracity. Would you be willing to do that for a billion dollars? We can't be. That is what he's talking about. There's, there's no amount of earthly wealth that could be given to us. That's where we need to be. There can't be any level of earthly wealth that could be offered us where we'd be willing to give up the word of God. That's why the first commandment is so important. That there, there, can be, there should not be any other God before God, if that makes sense. We need to be willing to give up our lives. And those who have been and made sacred covenants in the temple have made covenants that have to do with that, with consecrating everything that we are. And what I'm saying is that the Book of Mormon has an extremely valuable message that is greater than diamonds or rubies. And, and I'm speaking for myself, but I think I can probably speak for a lot of you. We are not valuing it that way. We let other things get in the way of us worshiping God and learning about him through the scriptures. Now, there was a Marine, he's a first sergeant that used to be attached to my unit, and he converted to Judaism. And we had a really good conversation one time where uh, I just asked him, I was like, why, why'd you, you know, convert from a Christian to a Jew? And he said, well, I started to realize that much of Western Christianity had just become watered down paganism. I was like, huh, that's it. What, what do you mean by that exactly? And he goes on to talk about, he gives one example. He says, well, think about what the Christian holidays are, the main Christian holidays. You got Christmas and you have Easter. What is, what is usually the focus on those holidays? Christmas, you got Santa, you got getting gifts. And then you have to remind yourself, oh, what's the true meaning of Christmas? Same with Easter, you know, you wake up, you find your Easter basket, you get your Easter eggs and... And he pointed out like the very fact that you have to say, hey, we need to remember the true meaning of Christmas means that our Christian holidays have been hijacked by paganism. <laughs> and I, that, that, really, that really hit me hard. And I don't think he's completely wrong. Now, I'm not going to tell you what you need to do when it comes to how you celebrate those holidays. But what I will say is that he is right that Judaism takes the religious holidays very seriously. There's a few religious holidays throughout the year that last multiple days and require sacrifice and fasting and intense spiritual exertion of reading of the scriptures and praying and things like that. And they don't have some side little pagan ritual that goes along with it that distracts from the actual meaning. It's just about them and the covenant God has made with their people and with them. And it's about them strengthening their resolve to keep their end of the covenant. So... I don't blame him. I think a lot of times, us as Christians, we don't take our religion that seriously. We live our life, and then we try to fit religion within our life, if that makes sense. Where I think the way that it needs to be is the religion is the center of our life, and we build the rest of our life around it, if that makes sense. And until we do that as Latter-day Saints, 
until I do that. And I'm talking about me here too. I'm not just talking about you guys. But us collectively of Latter- as Latter-day Saints, if we do not put God and Christ, the Book of Mormon, the rest, the, the restored gospel into the very center of our lives that everything else revolves around, we're not gonna, God's not going to give us more. If we don't value what he's already given us, why would he give us more? Like there's so many times that I'm just looking back in my life where it's like, oh, I can't go do this church thing or I can't read my scripture. I can't go to the temple. I can't because I have this, this, and this, and this. Like who's the God that I was worshiping then? It wasn't God, God. My other, these other things that I was doing in those moments were more important than whatever spiritual things that I was missing out on, whatever other, you know, religious responsibilities I had. And that's just not right. I just, I, 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 I might be rambling here, but I just feel like we are past the days where we can do that. The world is moving so radically towards secularism that if we do not counter with intense religious devotion, all is going to be lost. I might sound crazy. I might be crazy. But there's a lot of crazy things happening in the world. There's a lot of crazy ideologies out there that are vying to get our attention. So I guess in closing, the question I want to ask each of you and the question I'm asking myself is, Who is the God that I worship? Is it the God of popularity? Is it the God of convenience? Is it the God of money? Or is it the God of the Old and New Testament? The God of the Book of Mormon? And lastly, what do I need to repent of? What do you need to repent of in order to have the sealed portion of the Book of Mormon revealed unto you? Not only, you know, the the physical sealed portion that exists, but the spiritually sealed portion that's in there that I can't see because I do not have eyes to see and I can't hear because I do not have ears to hear. Ask yourself that question. So, well, guys, subscribe, share this, and uh, until next time, stay curious and hungry.